Good morning everyone. This is Vrishali. In our last session we discussed about KN and algorithm and previously we discussed about classification, regression, then probability, bias theorem, algorithms with example. I have mentioned machine learning playlist link in below description box. Now in this session I am going to present the next topic that is K-means clustering algorithm with example. So let's see. In this session we will discuss about clustering about k-means clustering algorithm, their applications, their algorithm steps, example and advantages and disadvantages. So let's see one by one. The first point is about clustering. So what exactly clustering? The clustering name suggests that the storage or similar features of storage, right? So clustering is one kind of concept where you can cluster the similar types of data like flowers, so you can cluster roses, sunflowers, then lotus, this all types of flowers in one cluster. This is called as cluster. So basically cluster means similar types of features of data or different features of dissimilar types of data, right? So these are the different applications of clustering, like clustering help to identify a group of houses, like on the basis of their value, their types and geographical location. Then again, clustering used in study earthquake means it check or it study the earthquake in particular region or it help the analysis to next probable location where earthquake can occur, right? So these are the just basic example of clustering. So clustering means similar features of groups of data. So this is called as cluster. See here in this image, there are green color dots are there, then blue color and then red color dots are there, right? So this is called as clustering. There is a similar types of features that can be combined together, right? So this is called as clusters. Next. The next point is about K-means clustering. So K-means clustering here, K. K means number of cluster. How many clusters are there? This is called as K. And clustering means group of similar types of data. K-means clustering is centroid based algorithm. Means each and every cluster having a particular centroid. Right? So this centroid having the minimum distance between the remaining data points. See here, they, this is a before k-means algorithm. There are lots of data are present and after applying k-means algorithm, these data points can be divided as per their colors, as per their features. And every set, uh, clusters having the particular center points and this center points is called as centroid. That's why it is called as centroid based algorithm. Next. The next, before move forward to the algorithm, you must know the application where this exactly algorithm uh, will used. So the ap main application of k-means clustering algorithms generally used in insurance fraud detection, then different search engine, customer segmentation, diagnosis system means there is a clusters of symptoms. So as per their symptoms, doctors will identify the particular disease. So this is one example. Then in also Amazon recommendation system, Netflix recommendation system. So all this recommendation system also use this clustering algorithm because every uh, online shopping app or other app having a particular groups of data. Like for example in Amazon. So there will be a men's wear, women's wear. So each and every data can be categorized or grouped together in one clusters, right? So let's take one this example. Suppose uh, a pizza chain, they want to open a delivery center across the city, okay? So what do you think, what would be the possible challenges or what things they need to study? So first thing is, they need to analyze the area where pizza is being ordered frequently. So in this area, they only open the particular delivery shop, right? Second, they understand how many pizza stores are needed in particular area. And third, they identify the particular location means their delivery of each and every location is easy or in minimum distance, right? So they find out the particular location where pizza store uh, within the particular areas. So this is called as centroid of that particular areas. So in this way, this can be used in, in our real life also. The next point is K-means algorithm steps. So I will explain this algorithm with example. So let's take the review. What exactly steps are? The first step is you need to select number of K, decide the number of cluster. First, you need to decide the K value, that is cluster value, how many clusters are there. 
second you need to select random k points or centroid if there are two clusters are there k is equal to 2 then you need to select k is equal to two centroids you need to select the centroids of both the clusters okay the second point is you need to assign each data point to their closest centroid means you can check the remaining data points and identify that the particular data points move to which cluster either k1 or k2 okay then again suppose the particular data points added to one cluster then again update the centroid of that particular cluster okay and after that you need to uh, repeat it this step again and at the last your model is ready so these are the just basic steps i will explain now this step with example okay so let's see here these are the k means algorithm steps so let's take one example see here this is your given data set okay like serial number height and weight and there are total 12 entries in this data set so the first step is you need to decide the centroid okay so just consider that the serial number 1 and 2 this is a centroid point of the two clusters for example first cluster is k1 second cluster is k2 the centroid of k1 cluster is 185,72 that is height comma weight and the another centroid of k2 cluster is 170 comma 56 okay so first decide the clusters clusters are two cluster means k equal to 2 second step you need to decide the centroids so k1 centroid is the serial number 1 and k2 centroid is serial number 2 okay so mention their clusters k1 and k2 so these things are uh, these things mention in your first and second step okay now now the problem statement is you need to identify that from the serial number 3 to serial number 12 entries in which cluster for example 168,60 this move to which cluster k1 or k2 then 179.68 so this cluster this entry move to which cluster k1 or k2 so you need to identify the particular data entry move to which cluster either k1 or k2 so this is your problem statement okay so first step decide the cluster k is equal to 2 two clusters are there second step decide the centroids okay now third next step step 2 you need to find out the shortest distance between the next data entry point with their clusters okay let's see here now the uh, next step is you need to identify that 16860 the serial number 3 this data entry move to which cluster k1 or k2 so for that purpose you need to use euclidean distance formula to find out the shortest distance okay whether this three entry shortest distance for one or two okay so this is your euclidean distance formula here x0 and y0 this indicate the observed value okay observed value means these are the data entry remaining data entry points and xc and yc this indicate the centroid value so these two are the your centroid value okay and d means distance so just put up this value into this formula see first you need to identify 168,60 near to which cluster so first check that distance between this data entry 3 to 1 so 168 168 minus 185 plus 60 minus 72 and their whole square so after solving this equation k1 is 20.80 so this is the distance between 3 serial number 3 to serial number 1 next k2 so at that time you need to identify 168.60 distance near to 172.56 or not so 168 minus 170 and 60 minus 56 whole square and after calculating this equation answer is 4.48 so this 3 this third entry is nearest to k2 because distance is minimum 4.48 as compared to 20.80 right so this third entry move to k2 cluster right so mention here k2 now after adding this entry to k2 cluster the next step is you need to update your centroid calculation or you need to update the centroid currently in this k2 cluster only one point is there 170,56 after comparing this 168,60 third entry this added into this k2 cluster so this will be added into this k2 means there are two points are now 
in this K2 cluster. So their centroid or the center points are updated now. So how to update? See here. Next step three: new centroid calculation. So you need to update their centroid points. How? See here. What was the previous centroid points? 170, 170, and new one is 168. 170 plus 168 divided by two. Now uh, next one is 60 and 56. 60 plus 56 divided by two. So after calculating this equation, the new centroid is 169.58. See here, these are the updated centroid. Centroid one is remain as it is because there is no changes in this K1 cluster, and K2 is 169.58. This is the updated centroid. Okay, means whenever you add the new data into the particular cluster, their centroid points are updated. So next step is again now. After three uh, serial number, you need to move for serial number four. That is 179 comma 68. Again, you need to find out the distance between this four to one and distance between four to two. So see here, first is you need to identify this point distance between K1 cluster. So 179, 179 minus 185 square and 68 minus 50. 68 minus 72 whole square. Okay, so after calculating distance is 6.32. Again, you need to find out distance between this with K2 cluster. So 179 minus 169 and 68 minus 58 whole square, and the answer is 14.14. So which one is the minimum distance? K1. That is 6.32. Means this data entry added into the K1 cluster, right? Again. After adding this data, you need to update the centroid of K1 by using this formula. So in this way, you need to follow the remaining steps or updated or uh, follow these steps continuously. Okay. So after adding all these twelve uh, entries into the particular cluster, so this is the final answer. That is, there are two clusters. So data entry or serial number one, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. these serial numbers are added into the k1 cluster as per this formula or as per these steps and serial number 2 and 3 are added into the k2 clusters so in this way two clusters are created as per this data set or as per this data points in this way k means clustering algorithms are work so what exactly it is first you need to identify the cluster second identify the centroids third compare the distance between each centroid and whatever the minimum distance added the particular data into that particular clusters and again update the centroids so you need to follow this step at the last so in this way k means clustering will work now uh, the next one is advantages and disadvantages so k means clustering algorithm it's very simple to implement and uh, it is scalable when there is a huge data sets are available and also is fasterly working on large data set and uh, it is a new example very frequently means adopts the new data or new features of data frequently and they generalize the clusters for different shape and sizes means as per the size of data the clusters will generate and the disadvantages of k means algorithm are it is sensitive to outliers sometimes there will be outliers are generated we already discuss what exactly outliers in our previous session so it not possible for k means algorithm and choosing the k value manually is very tough job right and a number of dimensions increases when scalability decreases so what how many features are there how many data sets are there it completely depends on the k means clustering data set algorithms all about k means algorithm thank you keep learning